and they have a walking path and a biking path and rollerblading and it, it's really pretty. You sort of go around underneath the landscape bridge and yeah, it's definitely it's worth doing for sure. And by the it goes by the beaches that they have there. And they have a big pool in Stanley Park, a pitch and puck golf course, tennis courts, restaurants. So it's a great place to go on a nice weekend. There'll be all kinds of people in there. All right, the beaches. Um, definitely a highlight of my summer. Um, they have all kinds of beaches in Vancouver. Each one sort of has its own niche of different kind of people. Um, most of them you can play beach volleyball at. Um, so a map of, of some of them. Um, you can see kids there is sort of, it's a very popular beach. If it's a sunny day, it'll just be packed with people all over the place. Uh, Spanish Banks is the one that's most popular for beach volleyball. If you ever just want to go play with friends, they have all these like posts set up. You can see in this photo. And you can uh, uh, sign out nets and balls from the concession stands. So you don't have to have your own, you can just go down and do whatever. Skimboard is very popular here. And then they have like change rooms and these concession stands at most of them. Uh, another thing about Jericho Beach, oh, I mentioned already that you can do the sailing and windsurfing from there. Um, and then I guess the only other one to mention is Rep Beach, which is the one sort of just off the end of UBC here. There's like this trail and all these stairs that go down to it. And it's really pretty. It's sort of, you go down there and in the forest left behind you and it's blocked off from the rest of, uh, from the, rest of the city. And it's clothing optional, you may or may not have heard. But it, it's really neat. It's sort of like some people with clothes, some people without, but everybody's doing their own thing. And then people are playing music and they have, they're have they selling stuff. And anyway, it's really neat. It's worth checking in for sure. All right, another thing to do in Vancouver is, um, is to visit Granville Island. It's a pretty touristy spot, but I would say it's worth seeing. It's a great thing to do on a Saturday. You, uh, they have a great public market, which is all kinds of food and fruit stands and that kind of thing. And then lots of different shops. So they just like neat crafts, like homemade wood carvings and stone and things from all over the world. And lots of art galleries. They have the Granville Island Brewery, which is neat to go. You can take a tour and test out their different beers. Um, I recommend the Granville Island Honey Lager, that's my favorite. Um, and then there's lots of like restaurants down by the water and patios, and you can uh, rent out kayaks down there as well. So I highly recommend visiting there on the weekends sometime. In terms of festivals, there's a festival going on almost all year, um, some sort of festival going on in Vancouver. To highlight a couple, the Fringe Festival is about to start, that's next week, and it's um, a theater festival. So they have about, I think it's about 460 productions happening this year. So uh, worth checking out. I think they have all kinds of genre of theater and um, there'll be lots of people going to those, I think. Uh, the Vancouver International Film Festival will be happening throughout the month of October. So that'll be worth going to see some of those. Uh, later next spring, they have this Cherry Blossom Festival. And you may or may not have noticed there's just a ton of cherry trees here. <coughs> and spring is just amazing. It's really, they all bloom and it's just gorgeous. So I think like they have this festival just kind of I guess celebrating it and they have like uh, this thing called Bike the Blossoms and you sort of bike around and see all these streets that have the most cherry trees and visit local farmers markets. So you can look at watch out for that. The Exploration Festival goes out through all of uh, May and I believe I read it's uh, Canada's second oldest Asian Heritage Month and uh, it seems to be a pretty big deal here so that will be happening. And the last one is the Celebration of Light Fireworks Competition. Um, that happens in July, and it's these four nights where you have these uh, companies that are representing different countries, and they put on this big musical fireworks show, and a ton of people come to watch it, it's something like 100, like 1.5 million come down for it, and all these big speakers set up on the beach playing the music and broadcasting it on the internet, uh, on the radio, and yeah, so watch it for that, it's really neat. And there's um, a ton of other ones that um, I think you'll be able to find on Okay, so going towards activities. Hiking is very popular here. It's, um, there's everything from just like casual walking in the forest to more hardcore hiking. So whatever you're into, you'll be able to find some sort of hike that you like that has a great view in the end. So the local mountains are great. The Cypress, Seymour, and Grouse, they all, um, they all have trails all over them and you can have a great view in the city. The Grouse Grind is very popular. It's sort of this, um, this trail that goes right up Grouse. It's sort of been described as an outdoor staircase, but it's, um, it, so I think it's, it's 
it's fairly tough, but you have a great view at the top, and there's like a pub and restaurant up there. And if you're really tired, you can take this uh, cable car back down. And oh yeah, another place is Lynn Valley and Canyon, which is on the North Shore. It's really pretty. It's like a sort of hiking trail, so they have a suspension bridge. And the Graduate Student Society is actually having a hiking trip there September 12th. And it'll just take up, I think it's like 11 till 4, so it's part of the day, and it's $8. And that might be worth doing as sort of like an introduction of how to get to the North Shore, and um, how to get to get the canyon, and just sort of get your bearings, I guess, over there. And then the last couple I've listed here is just sort of ideas. So if you, there's a ton of other ones if you're into hiking, but if, um, if you're looking for some like options, you can write them down. Um, the last one is very popular, the Chief, which is up in Squamish. It's about an hour away. And it's like a two to three hour hike, and it just has a beautiful view of Squamish at the top, so that might be something to do. Yeah. What's the picture up there? At the top? Yeah. Um, that is, that's a hike I did when I first got here last year, and it's part of this house on Crest Trail. And it goes from the top of one of the local mountains, Cypress, and it goes way up to uh, Port. Porto Cove. And so this is part way, it's on top of, I think, Mount Harvey. So uh, if you look up at the house on Crest Trail, it's a really neat one. It's about five days and it's, uh, it has some great views like that. But you'll get views like this climbing up even the local mountains. So yeah, definitely, definitely get out there. Alright, skiing. Oh, very popular here. Uh, I imagine if you're like me, you came here knowing this was happening and coming here partly for the skiing, I guess. Um, if you don't ski, I would suggest looking into it and maybe trying to take it up because um, you are in a skiing mecca. And everybody loves it here. So the local mountains all have skiing, so you can get um, season pass or grist go. You can get like a, uh, like a night pass there for the season, so you can always just like go after work and that type of thing. It's very close. Uh, there's Whistler Blackcomb. And then there's Mount Baker, it's also a popular one, it's in Washington, and it's got good skiing as well. If you don't have equipment here and you want to get into it, um, two cheaper options are the Vancouver Snow Show, it's happening October 24th, and I believe it's down at GM Place, and it's just sort of like cheaper equipment that's been, uh, like from older years that stores have brought in. And the other one is the Whistler Turkey Sale and Swap, it's on Thanksgiving, October 12th, and it's up at Whistler. And it's just sort of a swap from people bringing still good equipment, but it'll be a lot cheaper to try to find your new stuff. Uh, the last part is the UBC Ski and Board Club. It might be something to look into if um, you want to meet other people that ski, or I think they organize rides up there. They organize a couple of trips, I think, during Christmas and Reading Week. And they have some really good parties, so that's good too. Yes. Um, and yes, coming to my favorite slide. Uh, you know if there's a possibility to, to rent equipment for one season? Equipment for a season? I haven't heard of that happening. But there's usually quite a lot of equipment on Craigslist, so one option might be to buy and keep equipment and then sell it at the end. Or do something like take it to one of those swaps at the end. Yeah. But I haven't heard of someone renting for a season and then giving it back. I don't know. Has anybody else ever heard of that? I know during winter there's a bus that goes to Cyprus. I haven't taken it, so I don't know how, exactly how long it takes, but um, I know it's on the website. And so you can definitely, there's definitely a bus that goes to Cyprus. There's public transport to Gross. Uh, is there, can you? Yeah, you can go to Gross as public transport. You can take the C bus, for example, and then there is the bus 236, which is going directly to the base from the C bus. <coughs> I think there's another one leaving from downtown going over the bridge and then to the base.